I'm both a professor as well as a math YouTuber, and I find that kind of strange, and so I just wanted to record a video talking about it. Because at one level, I'm basically doing the same thing. I'm teaching math either to my students in person or on YouTube. But they are nevertheless pretty different, and I think there's some important lessons for learning in the differences between these two different roles. The first thing I'm struck with is just how different the scale is. As a math professor, I'm going to teach less than a thousand students in a given year, but on YouTube, well, I mean, last year I did 10 million views, so that's four orders of magnitude more. The breadth of YouTube is incredible. But at the same time, YouTube tends to be very shallow. With my students in the classroom, I might be working with them for 40 hours of classes, as well as office hours, homeworks, tests, exams, so many different things. But nevertheless, my ability to really take a student on a journey that transforms how they think and act as mathematicians, I feel is a lot stronger with my in-person students than it is for many of the people who watch me online on YouTube. And with that focused time, with a deep relationship between the students, they're really able to transform themselves as mathematicians over the course of a semester. On YouTube, well, some of you are amazing who watch all of my videos or an entire course playlist of videos. The average view of a video is only a few minutes long and most people just watch one or two videos. And so my impact just hits differently. On YouTube, I'm able to make a relatively small impact to an enormous number of people versus a hopefully relatively big impact to a smaller number of people in person. Now, I also focus on just really different things when I'm a professor and when I'm a YouTuber. On YouTube, it's all about making videos. And so what I'm really doing on YouTube is trying to tell compelling math stories. I try to take different components within the larger math journey that are interesting, that I can tell an interesting story about, that I can add some value added, whether it's animations and graphics and just tightly controlled editing. So you have a beautiful, finished, polished product that you can put up on YouTube and lots of people might go and watch. It's actually a strength of YouTube that you get to really watch people who have put in an enormous amount of effort, perhaps days of work just to make one 10 minute video that you get to enjoy. I I think that's partly why I get so many nice comments from all of you, because my videos are actually probably better than what I do in class, where I might go on the chalkboard and present that 10 minute videos topic by just writing on the chalkboard. And it's good, but it's not as good as it is in video format. But, and, and this is the big but, when I'm in class, my focus isn't actually on the same metrics that I focus on when I'm doing YouTube. That is, I'm not really focused on making the best possible presentation where it's the professor going and imparting their knowledge via a presentation to the viewers, to the audience. Instead, I'm a really big believer in active learning and mathematics. I want my students to be actively engaged. I want them to be doing math. I want them to be asking questions and answering questions. There's going to be a dialogue between us. I want there to be a lot of learning happening that's multilateral, not just one person in front of the camera talking to all of you on your screens. So in class, when I'm putting that extra effort in, I'm really trying to polish like the in-class activities that my students are going to be doing or making the perfect homework of just the right level of intrigue and difficulty to it. That's where I put a lot of my focus on as a professor, as opposed to on YouTube where I'm making these wonderfully polished presentations. I really think YouTube is incredibly powerful for how it's allowed to disseminate information around the world. But watching videos alone is not enough to learn mathematics. Like, I remember this comment that struck out to me, somebody who watched an entire playlist of mine in one day, and it's like, don't do that, please. You gotta do something more. You gotta be trying some problems. You gotta be doing some mathematics to really go to the next level as a mathematician. But my videos might be part of that but they shouldn't be the entire thing. As a professor, when I think that I'm doing a really good job, it's usually because I feel like I've had a really meaningful interaction with a student where they're really engaged, where they've learned a lot, or maybe the entire class in general has learned a lot. That's when I think I'm doing a good job as a professor. But as a YouTuber, the part of YouTube I actually most dislike is how it sort of traps you into caring about views. Let me give an example. This month I've released two videos. 
The first video was the integral of x to the x, and it's a fun little video, but it's a little video. There's a couple integration tricks, there's tater series, there's gamma function. I had fun with it, but I just threw it together in a few hours because I thought that you, the audience, would enjoy it. But I also made a really cool video on something called the wallpaper group, where we look at these wonderful, beautiful symmetries mathematically and in the real world, and I love this video. I sunk my teeth into it. I worked at it for a couple weeks. I polished it like you would not believe. And I just really love this video, which I think is accessible to a wide audience and takes people on a really interesting mathematical journey. But, and you can probably guess where I'm going at it, that x to the x integral trick kind of video, that one went pretty viral by my little small channel standards, got over a quarter million views. But the one I was really proud of, and, and I really, I mean like 10 times more proud, I love this video, entirely tanked in the YouTube algorithm. And that's totally fine. People are gonna be interested in different things. You don't have to be interested in the same kind of math I'm interested in, totally reasonable. So the real question is like, should I care? Should I care about this discrepancy in views? As I said, as a professor, what I would be focused on is the kind of meaningful interactions between my students. But with YouTube and the way the algorithm works, the impact that I can make really scales with the number of views that a video gets. So how well it performs in the YouTube algorithm is this thing that like sneaks into your consciousness and you start trying to think about it and do as best you can at you know, making a really good hook that engages people and gets them to click the video and all of that kind of YouTube stuff. So I find myself caring like at least a little bit about the discrepancy that you get in views on YouTube and I sort of just wish that that wasn't the case. Now, a part of this is because we live in a world where there is competition for our attention. And this is particularly the case when you're learning online. If you're in class, well, you've paid to be there. If you're a conscientious student, you're gonna show up and like at minimum, you're gonna probably write out some notes. Like, what else are you gonna do? But on YouTube, you're always like one click away from watching like a Mr. Beast video or something else that interests you. And as a result, when you're designing videos for YouTube, I'm always in the back of my mind thinking like, what are the interesting stories? Can I hook them in in the first minute or two? I don't wanna do what I sometimes do in class where the big mathematical payoff is like 45 minutes into the class. That usually isn't gonna be great for YouTube, even if it's great in class. That said, the lessons work both ways. Like one of the biggest things that I've taken away as a professor from my YouTube experience is getting better at telling mathematical stories and taking people on journeys and doing these things that I think are effective on YouTube and bringing them back into the classroom. Sometimes in class you have to do somewhat boring technical things because you're trying to cover material or get from one place to another place, but I do think professors have a lot to learn from effective YouTube and being able to take those stories that work well on YouTube and really bring them back into the classroom. That all said, at the end of the day, I'm still just really passionate about YouTube. I just love making videos. I love reading all of your interesting comments on the videos. And I think there's an, a tremendous power from YouTube that augments and is different from my sort of professor life and the teaching that I do as a math professor. I really consider myself very fortunate that I have two things that are sort of pretty awesome jobs, like being a professor and being a YouTuber, and that I get to do the thing that I love, which is mathematics in both of these mediums. And even though they're a little bit different, and even though there's some things I prefer about one than the other, being able to do both of them is pretty awesome. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them down in the comments below. And uh, in the next video, we'll get back to doing some actual math.